Pearson and from the Department of Communications. And I work in the project that I titled Portrayals of Mexican Americans in the Arizona Republic in Phoenix, Arizona, post Senate Bill 1070. Uh, this study examines the portrayal of Mexican Americans in the Arizona Republic by focusing on the rhetoric surrounding Arizona Senate Bill 1070 in the newspaper articles. And I want to show a little video first before I start my presentation, just so you have an idea of what Senate Bill 1070 actually means. part 
toward the United States. And that in turn uh, affected the way how the, mainly those people now, uh, since they've been there living for such a long time, have had a good uh, economy and now are able to live wealthier, like per se, and are different than the illegal undocumented per people who come to the United States, who in more of a sense are coming for a better life and a better dream, and are escaping poverty, crime, and other different stuff. So there is different classes or standard or whatever you want to uh, call it of Mexican Americans in the United States, and that in turn also has had an effect on how uh, this whole topic has been laid out. Furthermore, we had the Great Depression in the 1930s, which was what marked one of the first times the United States ever took, uh, like, deported illegal undocumented people from the United States. It was the largest group, and a lot of turn, and a lot of the effect was due to the economy. And as you're gonna figure out throughout this presentation, you're gonna notice the economy has a big say in how the uh, the immigration uh, comes up to play into politics news, the media, and the focus it has. And it's mainly mainly because of that economy. Then we had the Prospero program from 1942 to 1964. And this was a different change from previous uh, encounters with Mexican Americans and the American culture, due to the reason that the Prospero program was more focused on bringing people from Mexico who were knowledge in agriculture to try to enhance and uh, get those jobs that were not being uh, done because there was soldiers out fighting in World War II. Yet, when those soldiers came back after World War II and they were uh, veterans, the issue became that they were accusing those people to be taking away their jobs and not having jobs uh, to work in. So the Reseto program en ended really abruptly in 1964, affecting again, yet once again, bringing uh, illegal and documented people as uh, in the economy and affecting the way it was going. And that in overall affected the Mexican American image because they formed such a large population in that area. Also, the Chicano movement was a big play in that in the 1960s, which was, if you're not very familiar with it, it's very similar fashion to the African American of, uh, civil rights movement, just that this was more focused on farm workers and was led by Cesar Chavez. He was basically the face of the Chicano movement in the 1960s. And that took a big play in how now Mexican Americans have more rights, yet it didn't get as far as, as we'd have hoped because, again, we fall under what is now the current recession that we fell into. And back again, uh, Mexican Americans are in the big play of whether what, what's going to happen with illegal undocumented immigrants and the way that reasonable suspicion plays a major role in the image of Mexican Americans. Now, I want to explain a little bit more about illegal immigration before continuing also any further because there's some things we need to understand before, about illegal immigration and how that connects with Mexican Americans. First of all, they, they are trying to escape crime, drugs, gangs, and that is according to Wolgas 2009 and Far Lady 2006. So they've been trying to escape these, uh, they did different documentaries and tried coming to the, uh, have followed these different immigrants, following them down from the south, coming all the way up north to the United States. And notice how they've been facing a lot of discrimination and the crimes that the corrupt government and trying to escape those situations. And it was really important to note, take note of that. And I do have a picture over here of the apartheid state that has been recently uh, focused into Arizona. And a lot of people blame illegal immigration of forming Arizona into of an apartheid state. Yet, it's really important to think, uh, to, to think about, they've been escaping those situations. I'm not saying that the most uh, nice people who are not in drugs, crimes, and gangs are the ones coming to, uh, to the United States. Yet, it is uh, something to take into note. And not only that, but I, was, I went and looked into the crime statistics of Arizona, and from 2008 to 2010, being 2010 when the law was enacted, crime was decreasing from that time, to, uh, from 2008 to 2010. After the law was take, the law was enacted, crime has increased, suggesting that the, I don't know how much really effect the law has had in uh, helping the crime in Arizona. Also, for the most part, immigrants come to the United States to try to work in agriculture and not in other sectors of jobs. They do tend to work in some 
more in the cities and generally, but for the most part, they come to do hard labor and rigorous labor uh, in most of the time. And that takes away the point of illegal and undocumented people taking away the, the U.S. citizens' uh, opportunity to get a job during the economy or outside when the economy is not doing so well. So background in history, I did decide to focus on the Arizona Republic newspaper mainly because of their 1.5 million readership and being one of the top 20 daily newspapers in the country. Also, the readership demographics with the voting demographics in 2008 and the elections of 2008 were very closely correlated, meaning that the voters were the ones reading the newspaper in, in one way or another. So that really had an effect on why I decided to focus on the Arizona Republic newspaper. Now, my big, one of my big questions is where did Arizona Senate Bill 1070 gain support? The, the reason I ask this question is, I mean, as Senate Bill 1070 comes from a certain particular uh, point, whether it comes from a law of legislator, it comes from a person in the public, it, wherever it comes from. So it was really important to understand whether the Arizona Republic was giving space and providing more space or opinion on SB 1070 shaping the public opinion in one way or another. And I focused my study on uh, and they did sort of a similar analysis to Ottawa Soup 2002 on California Proposition 187. California Proposition 187 is very similar to Senate Bill 1070 with the difference that California Proposition 187 gives not only rights to the law enforcement but also gave rights to other public agencies such as uh, schools and healthcare providers to uh, let the government know of undocumented people. Furthering uh, the, the racial profile and even beyond just law enforcement, making it a problem. There is a difference between Proposition 187 and SB 1070, being that Proposition 187 was brought up by the public, while uh, SB 1070 was brought up by a lawmaker, which is, is a difference. And I feel like if it was brought up by a legislator, it takes a different account in the way that how it was uh, exposed to the public than the public bringing it up. Now, constructing an identity is something very difficult to do, uh, and, it's, and, and an image says a lot about a person and even about a group itself. And before I give you the image that the, the media has given to the to Mexican Americans in general, even if you with documented people, I wanted to give you the image mainly of of the of the law of going who brought up the Senate Bill 1070. First, we have Sheriff Joe Pyle. He's uh, the sheriff of Maricopa County in Arizona, and he's been basically the strongest promoter of, of, of this law. Not only this, but he's already been doing much of what Senate Bill 1070 was proposing to do. He's been done, doing it for years because he's just so much into that mode. And Governor Jan Brewer was the one who brought it into, who signed it into a, a, into law in April, and. She's been basically the one promoting it and trying to get it out there and uh, respect this law for, for, this, uh, for it to continue. And not only that, but constructing an image has been very difficult for uh, Mexican Americans, being that the media has tried to focus very much on what Bias 2006 has said, trying to give women such as Sofia Vergara, Jennifer Lopez, in a sexual appeal to the, uh, to the public, being a sex symbol, shaping very differently in one way how elite or high Mexican Americans you can think of are being in the United States. Contrasting to what one would think of a Mexican American or a legal undocumented person would be wearing a sombrero or having a shawl. How does that affect, the problem is, is that not everybody who has a sombrero is wearing a sombrero or has a shawl or is wearing a shawl is undocumented. <coughs> and not everybody that looks like Sofia Vergara or Jennifer Lopez is necessarily documented. Taking the, the opinion of the reasonable suspicion into play, how that is really uh, effective in Arizona and even throughout the country. Now, we have I I tried to research and do my research and study whether there was positive portrayals of Mexican Americans in newspapers throughout the his, throughout of, of previous research, and what I mean by positive portrayals is trying. To, like to expose to the public the way the words are being used in the newspaper or in the contrast how Turk et al and Greenberg et al did, they did a content analysis which was looking 
support the quantity and space provided in the newspaper for Mexican Americans. And they found that there was positive portrayals or there was adequate space and adequate, um, an adequate amount of articles on Mexican Americans saying that it was good. The media was not putting uh, Mexican Americans in bad play. They were being fair about it and being obje objective. Now, Narreca 2010 and Mugado 2009, in contrast, found, uh, would have, you might notice the times are different, but they found that there was negative portrayals, and again, they were also looking at the quantity of articles. Uh, a lot of the thing that probably I thought was the times might have been the political situation they were living in that probably might have had a difference, being that in the 1980s, it's when the amnesty was passed by Ronald Reagan. And I don't know, I... Even when it was content analysis, the content analysis and looking at the quantity, I wanted to further that research and look into my study, further study, and focus on the quality of those articles, looking at what they were actually saying. What were they trying to expose to the public? What words did they use? How did they use those words? Did they use any stigmas, any different uh, stereotypes to try to tell the public how they were focusing on Mexican Americans in specific? And Flores 2003 brings it up that every, everyone thinks of uh, undocumented work or undocumented legal, more of the first face that would come up would be more of a Mexican American face. And that is really something that has been heavily used in public by the, by the media. And that is why I wanted to do that critical content analysis and see if the Arizona Republic newspaper had anything to help the SB 1070 in any way. Now, for, to explain what critical content analysis, basically what I did was I went and looked at the content analysis, and the way that I did that was I went and searched Mexican on the electronic newspaper for the Arizona Republic, and I did three months prior to the enactment of SB 1070 and three months after. The enactment of SB 1070 was July 29, 2010. So I went from April 1st to July 29th, and July 29th to November 1st. And I had those two sections separated because I feel there was, a, there was gonna be a difference in those two sections, the way the, the Arizona Republic was gonna be reporting. And then what I did was I collected random articles, which I did by looking at taking every 10th article and not picking and choosing just the title or anything. I just got every 10th article regardless of what they were. And then I categorized the articles in four different sections, politics, crime, entertainment, and other. Anything that was politics basically was if they were talking about a politician doing a speech, a talking about laws or a certain situation like that, they followed under politics. Crime, if they were talking of anything having to do with law enforcement and the police getting involved in that situation, that would follow under crime, entertainment, or events anything in that particular celebrity stars and stuff like that, that way, that's where it went and everything else went under other. Then came a discourse analysis in which I tried to look at the positive, negative, and neutral portrayals of Mexican Americans. And what I mean by positive portrayals or negative or neutral is, in positive, they, were, they would have to be focused on, on explaining more on the business type, the the events going on with Mexican Americans, not looking at crime, not looking at anything, trying to overlay it on that, on that particular zone. While negative, of course, if they were looking at crime and trying to prove gains and bring up Mexican Americans in that sense, every once in a while they mention those articles and not necessarily putting it out to everybody, then that would definitely be negative article. And what I meant by neutral was it wasn't too far positive, it wasn't too far negative, it was more in between and that's how I decided whether they were positive, negative, or neutral portrayals of Mexican Americans. Now, while I was doing that, the, my folk, main focus was how did the Arizona Republic newspaper contribute to SB 1070? And the way, it was a question within a question, because the way that I answered that question is <coughs> what is the language that used in this newspaper to present Mexican Americans uh, to the readership? So the language is a really important part because the way the language is used and the words that are being used it affects greatly how a person perceives an article and overall perceives uh, the Mexican Americans as a whole. For my findings, I found that before the enactment, there was nine negative articles, 21 uh, neutral articles, and 13 positive articles. Now, you might
might think that 99 negative articles, if we were doing a content analysis, that would be, I mean, it's not too much, it's just nine articles, it's not bad. The problem was that those nine articles were heavily focused <coughs> on crime and drugs. And they, the Arizona Republic had a particular way of putting this in what they called red zones. And these red zones happened to be where the Mexican Americans were. And those red zones, uh, they basically mentioned all the entire, like, make, making drugs look bad as they were, and the crime and everything and putting as Mexican Americans practically solely uh, fault for all of those different crimes and those different problems that were going on. Now, not only that, but there was an article that was brought to my attention which was The Republic Recommends. And this article was basically the, essentially the article was about the Arizona Republic recommending different politicians and to be voted for when they were coming for the elections. Now, the article, the politician the Republic, Arizona Republic was recommending were those that had the harshest and strictest uh, pla platforms against uh, immigration, and they were the most anti-immigration anti -immigration focused. With the exception that they did not, I do, I do have to mention, they did not want Sheriff Joe Arpaio to come back to the election. Other than that, the rest of the, uh, of the people who were running for office and the Republic was recommending were heavily, heavily anti-immigrant politicians. And that was something that was brought to my attention. Being that the neutral and positive articles were mainly focused on uh, not accepting SB 1070 going against it. So it was really weird how, in one way, it's saying, do not accept Arizona SB 1070, and on the other, on the other way, it's saying, put these people who will be supporting it anyway for the politics. After the enactment, there was a big drastic difference. There was only one negative article, 22 neutral, and five positive articles. And I feel like there was a big factor in those nine negative articles. Not necessarily was it the only factor, but it was a contributing factor in the success of Arizona's SB 1070. And it, the one negative article was negative, but in a way, I mean, I feel like it was something natural, part of the part of it of. Uh, the newspaper and the media outlet trying to get to the public. But I, uh, I would, what I read, after the enactment, Arizona SB 1070 was more objective than before the enactment, focusing on crime and, and the drug war and everything like that. And not only that, but after the enactment, most of the articles and solely all, all the neutral and positive articles were mainly about the food and history of Mexican Americans. Nothing was really about crime. Even the, the a few articles that were about crime were not even mentioned uh, or even related to Mexican Americans at all. So, in contrast to Turk et al. 1989 and Greek et al. 1983, I found that there was a uh, Arizona Republic had negative portrayals and representation of Mexican Americans, and that in a way could have had a factor in in what in the decision of Senate Bill 1070. Now, I do I. Uh, my study uh, correlates with Navarrete 2010 and Mogalo 2009, which we both found that there was negative portrayals of Mexican Americans that were heavily focused on crime, violence, and the Mexican drug war, affecting the overall image of Mexican Americans and putting in doubt whether to continue uh, continue this, uh, this, the success of SB 1070 such that it reached the U.S. Supreme Court. And talking about the U.S. Supreme Court, I wanted to give you a little bit about the decision that was taken on the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court struck down most of Arizona's strict law targeting illegal immigrants, but said Arizona's police can stop, question of briefly detain immigrants if they have reason to believe they are in the country illegally. The justices said the federal government has the ultimate authority to decide who will be held on immigration charges and deported. While police can stop people they suspect are illegal immigrants, the justices said the police have limited authority. They must check with federal immigration agents before deciding to hold the suspects. The justices also blocked parts of the Arizona's SB 1070 that would have made a state crime for illegal immigrants to carry documents or to seek work. The court's decision appears to give states such as Arizona a quite limited role in enforcing the laws against illegal immigrants. Their police can notify federal agents if they have a suspect in custody, but they cannot keep them in a county jail on state charges. So it is really important to understand that uh, basically the most controversial part of the law, which is the reasonable suspicion is still in play and is still kept, and that's why it's really important for future research to continue furthering this research in this area, because the, this is not...
now going to affect and take a different role in how things are going to be shaping in Arizona. And not only that, but about 15 to 16 other states have been modeled the law of Arizona Senate Bill 1070 and taking it, trying to take it into action and pass bills in their own homes in those, in those different states. So that's why it's really important. This, this issue has come really into, into action and has been a really big controversy since Senate Bill 1070 started, which was really the first one that came in this, in this time frame. And it's, I think it's really important to further this research, especially now, because maybe when the economy goes back up, as seen in the past, it, the immigration issue is going to be a thing of the past and come back again in the future. And I think for future research, a, a comparative analysis of the New York Times or any other international newspaper with the Arizona Republic would be very effective to know what other newspapers said and other media outlets said about the situation and how they use it and the language they use compared to that of the Arizona Republic. And another option would also be to do interviews of Sheriff George Pyle, Governor Jan Brewer, and other Arizona constituents and probably form even a documentary of this issue and knowing how that, what they think versus constituent things and how that all together plays a role in, in this state. And other than that, I would, I would like to uh, thank and acknowledge Dr. Jeffrey Peterson for his help and his time. Um, and that, I was a very uh, acknowledged researcher at this point when I started, and he has helped and understand.